Shroom Rover here, and today, welcome back to the Nickname Academy. Yes, indeed, this is the series where we are going through every single Pokemon, right the way from Bulbasaur through to Zeraora, and giving them all nicknames. And when Gen 8 comes out, we're going to do them as well. Now, today we are actually going to be finishing up Gen 2. Very exciting stuff, um, the last lot of Gen 2 to go. <clears throat> So um, let's not waste any time, let's get right on cracking. We left off last time at Kingdra, so let's move on to the very next Pokemon on our list in the Pokedex, and that is going to be Fanpy. Fanpy is going to be called Tai, as in uh, T-H-A-I. Uh, tai to do with Thailand. Tai. Why is it going to be called Tai? Well, um, in my searches <coughs> for information about nicknames, I happened across a restaurant in uh, Mino, I think that's how you spell it, M-I-N-O-T, Mino, North Dakota, <clears throat> far away from where I live, but in this place there is a Thai restaurant called Little Blue Elephant. And you know, that's exactly what Fanpy is. Uh, this actually works on a number of levels because um, a very good friend of mine, Kristen, you may have known her previously as Hey Fanpy, um, one of her favorite foods is Thai curry. So you know, it works really well there. You've got a Fanpy to do with Thai in various ways, and that is why we're gonna call Fanpy Thai. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, moving on from Fampy, we have Fampy's evolution. That's going to be Donphan. Donphan is going to be called Garcia. Uh, the reason for this is named after Jack Garcia. Don't know who that is? No worries. Neither did I until I researched this. Jack Garcia uh, was an FBI agent <clears throat> many years ago now. Um, he was an FBI agent who infiltrated the famous uh, Gambino Mafia family. Um, he was sort of an inside man there. So he sort of was getting all pally with these uh, Mafia members of the Gambino family, including the Don. So he uh, had to pretend to be a, a friend of the Don, so he was a Don fan. Eh? Yeah? Eh? Yeah? Don fan. Lovely. Um, <clears throat> funnily enough, that's actually not going to be the only reference, stupid reference to um, Mafia links in nicknames. But that's another story for another generation. Don fan, gossip. So, after Donphan, we have one of my favourite Pokemon to use ever, that's going to be Porygon 2. And Porygon 2 is going to be called Toilet Buddy. And why is this? Well, <clears throat> normally when referring to Porygon 2, most people will just call it P2, um, just for ease of saying it. Um, so like, if you've got a Toilet Buddy, then like, it's like you're going for a P, and they're going for a P2. <laughs> so there we go, Porygon 2, P2, Toilet Buddy, lovely. We're getting into some like <clears throat> fairly forgettable Pokemon in some of these cases, and this is no exception. After Porygon 2, we have Stantler, and Stantler is going to be called Jägermeister uh, after the drink. And the reason for this is, if you've ever seen a bottle of Jägermeister, you'll see that the logo for Jägermeister is a stag um, with a with a, a cross above its head. Um, the cross being a holy symbol, um, and of course, stag being a stag. Uh, with antlers and stuff. So, you know, crosses associated with religion, associated with saints, uh, the abbreviation for saint being ST, and then you've got the antlers. So you've got the saints and the antler, ST antler forms Stantler. So there we go, Stantler's going to be called Jägermeister. Wouldn't it just been easier to say the logo for Jägermeister is a stag, wouldn't it? But you know how we do things right about now, gang. We don't do things in the simple way. And testament to that is going to be moving on to our next Pokemon, that's going to be Smeargle. And Smeagol is going to be nicknamed Pockets. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, this isn't named after a person so much as an animal. It's named after an animal called Pockets Warhol. Now, why? Who is this? Well, Pockets Warhol is a um, is a monkey. He is a white-capped capuchin monkey, um, and he lives at Storybook Farm in Canada. I've never been there. I've never even been to Canada, but um, I don't really know even how I found this. But um, he's a, um, a, a white cap capuchin who lives at this farm in Canada, and um, he paints, and he paints with his tail, which is exactly what Smeagol does. So there we go. I didn't want to call it Warhol. I could have called it Warhol, but then it would have been like, oh, it's obviously just because he's a painter. No, not quite. We're going to call it Pockets instead, because he paints with his tail. There we go. Smeagol, Pockets, done. Next up, we have Tyrogue, the pre-evolution to Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and of course the one we're going to do after that, after this rather. Uh, Tyrogue is going to be called Level 3 Fighter. Now, why is that? Uh, it's going to be Level 3 once, but uh, this is not a reference to Pokemon so much as a reference to another game that I love, Dungeons & Dragons, D&D. 
Um, there is a class in D&D, the fighter class. It's a very basic sort of, I hit you with a big weapon kind of class. Um, but obviously in D&D characters scale and level. So when a fighter gets to level 3, um, they get a new perk. Obviously characters, various classes in D&D, for those of you who haven't played it, uh, they level up dependent on, you know, what the, the dungeon master suggests, but they level up, and at various levels they can get different perks, or feats, or just, um, class attributes. And at level 3, the fighter class of attributes is they get to choose a martial archetype. So they get to choose what kind of fighter they're going to be. And of course, that's exactly what happens upon Tyrog's evolution. It changes class, as it were, depending on what type of fighter you're looking at. Hit him on Lee, hit him on Chan, hit him on Top. It changes its class dependent on its kind of its its attributes and its statistics. So yeah, it's a fighter that chooses its class, much like Tyrog does. So there we go, Tyrog, level three fighter. A much simpler one for its most recently introduced evolution, Hitmon Top, and that is going to be Kylie, and that is very simply named after Kylie Minogue, who had a song called "Spinning Around," and that's just what Hitmon Top does. It spins, you know. It's the one of the consummate rapid spinners going, so there you go, hit him on top, very simply going to be called Kylie. <coughs> <coughs> and now we're getting on to even more baby forms of Pokemon, starting off with Smoochum. Smoochum is going to be called Riverdale. Now why is this? Well, Riverdale is a fictional location. <laughs> it's um, the setting slash hometown of a character called Lil Jinx. Uh, Lil Jinx is the eponymous character of a US comic uh, for kids. She's called Lil Jinx and she lives in Riverdale. And um, Smoochum is basically a little Jinx. It's the baby form of Jinx, it evolves into Jinx. So that's why we're going to call Smoochum Riverdale. Nice little thematic link there to do with comics. The next baby we're looking at is Elekid. And Elekid is going to be called Strangers. Uh, the reason <coughs> that Elekid is going to be called Strangers is it's named after a song. And in this case, the song Strangers is by a Kazakhstani record producer, musician, and DJ who goes by the moniker of Electric Child. And that's what Elekid is. It's the child form of an electric type. So that's why Elekid is going to be called Strangers. Next up on the babies list, and I think it's the last one we've got out of this particular list, and it is, is going to be Magby. And Magby is going to be called Slimming World. It's a weird one, but stick with me. Um, Slimming World is a magazine uh, about slimming, uh, you know, how to stay in shape, get slim, and all that kind of stuff. I've never read it, obviously. <laughs> um, but um, what I learned whilst researching this, I learned that uh, Slimming World is in fact the second largest circulating magazine in the UK. Good for them. I didn't know that. Many of you won't have known that. So, you know, it's, it's the second largest. So, it's not like the first magazine of choice, it's the second one. It's not Mag A, it's Mag B. Had to be done, had to be done. Mag B, Slimming World. <laughs> Another silly one, but you know how we do by now. Now I've got to scroll up because we're on the next page, here we go. After Mag B, we are going to get back out of the baby forms and into Miltank. And Miltank is going to be called Bread for War. Now, why is this? Well, we're going to take the two parts of its name. So let's look at the tank option first. Um, tanks are used in war. We all know this. Uh, we've all studied history, or I imagine the vast majority of us will have. We all know tanks are used in war. And um, let's look at the other part of its name, mill. Uh, mill is used in bread making. Um, you know, to grind up cereals or grains or whatever to, to form the bread. So mill tank, we've got mill used to make bread. We've got tanks used in war. And there is a saying or phrase used which is bread for war which is you know you're ready for combat this kind of thing so you know you've got the bread you've got the war merged together bread for war mill tank done <clears throat> moving on from one bulky normal type to another we have blissey just one of people's least favorite pokemon to have to face um, i saw a gif recently of someone using an attack against a blissey in gen 4 and it literally took about three minutes for like the hp bar to just go down and down and down, and down. You could have like got up, made a cup of tea, had a sandwich, gone to the loo, come back and it would still be going. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. Blissey's nickname is going to be Ignorance, and this is a very, very simple one. Uh, from the same, Ignorance is Bliss. E. Easy, simple, done, Ignorance for Blissey. Now we get into the legends. The Gen 2 legends start off with Raikou. Raikou, Raikou, Raikou. People say it differently, I'm gonna say Raikou. 
Uh, anyway, it's going to be called Faraday. Very important on the spelling of that. F-A-R-A-D-A-E. And once again, this is a corruption of two things merged together uh, from the Fru Fru School of Nicknaming. Um, firstly, we have uh, Michael Faraday, who was a scientist, um, very much his field being electromagnetism. Um, and also we're going to corrupt that with the word Felidae, which is uh, the Latin genus for felines, cats, and, and the like. Ryko being basically a saber-toothed cat. Uh, so we've got the corruption of Faraday for the electric side of things, Felidae for the uh, feline side of things, merge them together to give us that spelling of Faraday, which is what we're going to name Raikou. After Raikou, we have Entei. It is weird, the order, because for whatever reason, I think Entei got big press from the movie, so I certainly say it in this order. I always say in the order of the, of the legendary beast as Entei Raikou Susin, the Suicune. I uh, said that really weirdly. Um, we'll answer that. But it goes Raikou Entei Suicune. Anyway, Entei. Entei is next, and Entei is going to be called Ace. And the reason for this is from uh, One Piece. Um, and <laughs> people, <laughs> I think I was in Chaos in the Skies stream, and people were like, do you watch One Piece? I was like, yeah, I watch One Piece. And they're like, I don't believe you. <laughs> All right, well, this should prove it. Um, Ace, named after Fire Fist Ace, who is Luffy's brother. Um, he ate a devil fruit, which gave him the power of fire. He can turn his body to fire. He can manipulate and control fire. Um, and he has this big finishing move. All the characters' moves, as it were, they give them names for whatever reason. And Ace's, one of his big finishing moves is called Entei. That's just the name of it. So yeah, Entei is going to be called Ace after that particular move in the anime. Finally, of the legendary beast, we have Suicune. Now, you may have heard me mispronounce it just then. I used to think this thing was pronounced um, Suicine, which is dumb. Uh, but Suicune is going to be called Bullseye. And this is named after the uh, horse in Toy Story 2 and subsequently 3. Um, Bullseye is Woody's horse in the Toy Story series. Um, and the whole sort of saying or phrase that Woody uses to Bullseye is ride like the wind um, or run like the wind or something like that. It's, I think it's run like the wind uh, to get him to go really quickly. And there's a lot of reference to uh, Suicune in the Pokedex, I think in the anime, in the games, uh, to how it moves like the wind and it embodies the wind. So yeah, that's exactly why Suicune is going to be called Bullseye, because they run like the wind. Next up we have the pseudo-legends of Gen 2, and that's going to start with Larvitar. Larvitar is going to be called Geophagia, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, now what is this? Well, Geophagia is the... it's, it's weird. This is a weird thing to exist and have its own name. It is the practice of eating earth or soil-like substrates. So I guess it's more to do with animals. Um, but that's what it's called, Geophagia, the practice of eating earth. And if you look in the, in the, uh, in the Pokedex, <coughs> you'll know that uh, Larvitar grows by eating soil. That's how it grows into its next forms. So yeah, it basically does, you know, partake of Geophagia, the practice of eating earth or soil. So that's why Larvitar is going to be called Geophagia. Very nice and simple. Slightly less simple, <coughs> but also to do with Pokedex entries, is going to be its evolution, Pupitar. Pupitar is going to be called Vernia, and this is named after um, Vernia Thrusters. Now, what are these? Again, I didn't know this before looking it up. Um, Vernia Thrusters, they are thrusters that are used on spacecraft. Um, if you've ever seen sort of space, uh, space shuttles or anything sort of maneuver themselves, you'll see that on like the nose cone and stuff, and I think on the wings they have these little sort of... Um, these little like sort of thrusty things and they, they thrust out gas. Um, now these are the Vernia thrusters and they are sort of used for fine tuning to spacecraft altitude and velocity. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, within space, uh, no sort of gravity uh, existing and yeah, sort of you have to force movement however you can. So they have these small thrusters to get very fine tunings uh, to positioning altitude velocity and stuff on shuttles. Why is this anything to do with Pupitar, you may ask? Well, again, in the Pokedex entry, uh, Pupitar is said to move around uh, via gas propulsion. It's the only way it can move. It's basically a pupus, so it can only move via gas propulsion. That's exactly what Vernia thrusters do for shuttles. So Pupitar is going to be called Vernia. Finally, in that evolutionary line, we have the mighty powerful Tyranitar. And Tyranitar is going to be called Twitch at the Beach. Very strange name, very silly name, but it has its own reasoning. Uh, Twitch is a streaming service. Many of us use it, many more of you will probably watch it. 
Uh, and a beach ideally has sand. So you've got Twitch, Stream, Beach, Sand, Sand Stream. Tyranosaur gets the ability Sand Stream. So that's why it's going to be called Twitch of the Beach. <laughs> and that works for the mega evolution of Tyranitar as well. Obviously it maintains Sandstream as its ability, so that's why, you know, we're going to call them both Twitch of the Beach. Why not? Next up we have Lugia. We're well into the Legends here again. Lugia is going to be called Toilet Brush. Why is that? Well, uh, a Toilet Brush is something you use to clean your toilet. Very simple. Uh, it's um, an item that you use in the toilet. It is gear for toilets. It's Lugia. gear. It's, it's, it's a weird one, uh, I was finding it uh, difficult to find a nickname for Lugia, but um, yeah, it's it's an item that you use in the loo, so it's it's gear that you use in the loo, it's loo gear, so there we go, Lugia is going to be called Toilet Brush. Second toilet based um, pun nickname we've had in this particular episode, very strange. Anyway, moving swiftly onwards and we have its counterpart, Ho-Oh. Now Ho-Oh is going to be called Corcoron, I think I'm saying that right, Corcoron. This is named after an author called Marisha Corcoran. Uh, she is the author of a book called A House Interrupted. It's a book about a, um, a woman whose husband is a sex addict, I believe. Um, but why is that anything to do with ho -Oh? Well, it's called A House Interrupted. So if you were literally interrupting the word house, you might get to the first two letters, H-O, and you're like, oh, because you're interrupted. So interrupting saying the word house would be like, pu o oh. So you got the ho dash o ho o corcoron house interrupted. It's a strange one, but we're going with it. I always find legends a bit more difficult to nickname, so they can get a little bit weird and strange and silly. Speaking of which, we have the final Pokemon from Generation Two. <clears throat> it's Celebi, and this is one of my oldest and one of my most favourite nicknames. Too much honey for Celebi. Why is that? Well. Let's say you have too much honey, you're a beekeeper, you have far too much honey that you know what to do with. You need to cut down on production of honey. So if you have too much honey, what do you need to do? You need to sell a bee. <laughs> so there we go, sell a bee is going to be called too much honey. And that is going to be it from this video. Thank you all so very much for watching, I do hope that you enjoyed. We're done with Gen 2 guys, we've got through two generations of Pokemon nicknaming them all, we've done <clears throat> 251 nicknames in total so far, I believe, which is monumental. Um, but it means we have to move on to a new generation. Now, Gen 3, in terms of nicknaming them, I'm not so hot on it. I haven't got them all. By no means have I got them all. I certainly haven't done the artwork and the GFX for all the Pokemon, so it could be a while before we see another episode of the Nickname Academy. But do stick with me on this. I really love that you guys are watching and I hope that you are enjoying it. Uh, remember to leave down in the comment section below your choice of nicknames. I love hearing you guys' nicknames and your ideas. It gives me so much joy to see you guys coming up with your own uh, innovative and fantastic nicknames. Uh, and keep doing it. Please keep doing it because remember, every Pokemon deserves a nickname, so make sure you give them one. But I'm going to get out of here. I've rambled on far too long. So, my final thank you to you all for watching. And I guess with that, I'll see you next time. Laters.